Hello, this is Haka Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Godfrey needs lasagna. How did you do that? Who, me? Garfield canonically has the power to invade your horny thoughts. Oh, I hate when I just have to, ooh, tiny text for me to be able to read here. It's like it starts off good and then suddenly I can't read in the actual Templar part. Richard Suckle is a film producer. Suckle and his fellow producers are nominated for the Academy Award for he was born January 1969. And this guy produced Scooby Doo and Scooby Doo 2. Fun fact The producer for the Scooby Doo movies is named Dick Suckle. He was born in 1969. Dick Suckle 69. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the sound broke. Whatever. Hmm. It is the end of the year. Congratulations for all this, to all the specimens which made this far in the in never ending experiment of our plan drawing a sphere around the sun in an uncaring vacuum that would be completely silent if not for the screams of the stars and planets. Congratulations to all the Homo sapiens for enduring. We, the owners of the experiment, are surprised with the results so far. Some areas seemed improvement, but things went well within accepted lines. For now, enjoy the festival of sounds and lights meant to give you some stimuli. This experiment will continue shortly after. Christmas as a cultural icon is starting to get really dystopian in the climate sense. December has historically been a time of year in which there would be snow in a significant portion of Europe and North America. And the fact that it's not even icy this time of year and all the Christmas songs and decoration and reference a time of year that will likely never exist in the same way in my lifetime is so strange. For reference, this OP lives in Scotland, so it is weird that there is no ice or snow in December anymore. I do not know that he lives in Scotland. I'm not going to try and do it with Scottish accent anyway. Good evening! Service dogs being trained to sit through a play. There are actors on the stage performing a musical for or a theater full of dogs. That sounds amazing. I want to be one of those actors. Turns out 2000 was 20 years ago, which is odd since 1980 was also. Oh, it really feels that way, doesn't it? The thing Gen Z really needs to understand is that no one older than them is ever going to be able to estimate time correctly because of the millennium. Millennium will not be that long ago. Everything since the millennium will always be, in some sense, new. It just broke us, okay? It was too big and we'll never or quite be able to deal. 
Was the Millennium Bug inside us all along? Yes, and it created Generational 404. <gasps> oh my goodness, 2000 did this to us. That's why it seems like, it, it seems so weird that 2000 is 20 years ago. I mean, it's 2023, so 23 years ago, and I was born in 2000, so like... Oh, wait, no, it's 2024, Happy New Year. The three gates when they get bald or whatever, I didn't play it. I love that mayhem is a legal term. Like, you can be charged with mayhem. It's like arresting someone for funny business. The jury finds the defendant guilty on all accounts of tomfoolery, japing, and general taking the piss. Causing a ruckus. My client pleads not guilty on three charges of being back on his bullshit. <laughs> Hey look, Lois, I became Garfield. Holy crap, John, this lasagna is freaking sweet. And... Yeah, because Peter Griffin was so funny. And I can't be sure that opened right. <sighs> That's going to be fun to get into. My friend took an astray, and she's the cutest kitty ever. He named her Oil, so whenever he sends a picture of her, you and my other friend ends up like we're role-playing SC US military. Oil! Oil! I love you, Oil! I love you, Oil! I kill for her. I kill anybody for oil. In our defense, this is oil. Best girl in the world. I love you, oil. To be fair. Yeah, I get it. Schoolgirls told to wear longer skirts to create a good work environment for male staff. If male staff are in any way distracted by children's knees, I don't think they should be allowed anywhere near a school, to be honest. Preach. Let's be real. If little girls' knees, shoulders, and clavicles are a problem for male teachers, you don't have a dress code issue. You have a pedophile issue. And I'm going to go a step further. If you are having a, if you are being distracted or in any way attracted to a child's body in any state of dress, you are a pedophile. Because that is completely on you. Children don't look at bodies the same way as adults do. And there is no sexual context when and as a child. And honestly, just in general, no. Oh my goodness. I received my Twilight plush. It's much, one, it's much smaller than I expected. Two, it arrived like this. Don't worry, you can fix this. Google Twilight Sparkle Inflation to find out how. Oh. Okay, give me a minute. By Jove, this is pornography! I'm not sure if I should have said that one out loud. <laughs> Don't 
www.furfinity.net. They have Cloudflare. They have Cloudflare on that site too now. Whatever. Check if the site connection is secure. Verify you are human. Furfinity.net needs to review the security procedure. Of all the sites to use that phrasing on, I am not human. Dang it. <sighs> they have to remind uh, Tumblr users that furries are still human. Nothing is real. Adam's ne ever touch each other. You're you've never touched anything in your life. Okay, well, when I pet my dog, he is soft, and when he licks my hand, it is wet, and that is far more real to me than whatever is going on at an atomic level. What my items are doing is their fucking business. This man, I'm is he trying to stop my dog from eating tissues directly out of the box. Nuclei I don't touch, but the nucleus is not the core of reality. Reality is made of electrons dancing. Reality is made of bonds. You pet your dog, and the items that you that are you brush up against the items that are him. Well, technically no, but your our magnetic fields brush up against each other, and that is more than enough. And electrons that are you press into the electrons that are him. Once again, that's not quite what happens. Every atom has an electron cloud that is negatively charged. Have you ever had two um, magnets that are of the same charge next to each other? They repel each other. But you are still touching on a non-atomic level, and that is all that really freaking matters. And both of them change their movement. This is true, they do change their movement. Magnets can change each other's movements a lot. Electrons, of course, are not really particles and do not really move. You pet your dog and the electron on orbitals of your skin overlap with the electron or or orbitals of his fur and both are changed by the contact. You are not made of t little moats floating alone in a void. You are a single, unfathomable cord formed of a trillion vibrations. And so is he. And though you play is changing at every moment by what you touch and how you breathe. And so is his. And atoms do not really have edges. And to, and to touch is to interact. When you put your hand on your dog, the universe does not know that you are separate. The song expands to hold you both. I feel like there was more. <sighs> that feeling when your body is requesting something but you're not sure what, so you just start eating and drinking random stuff to try and figure it out. Me, eating a chocolate waffle at 7pm. Is this what you desire, O oh, prison of flesh? Meanwhile, your body is like, I need water. So real. Let me freak you. Life? Is that you? The only thing that wants to smash me is life. Over the head with a rock. Very accurate, though. Oh my goodness. So we see cute little Kirby, the outfits being in, in that they are. Eating in apples and cake and, you know, as they, they do. It's rated T for teen. Blood. Violence. And then... And then we see... Shadow the Edge Edge Lord Edgehog Holding a gun and walking down a city that looks like, like there's an explosion behind him, which really it makes this look even more cool. But it might just be all the lights condensing in behind him. That's red E, 10 plus. This will never not be funny to me. 
I actually follow people so much on this site that I don't know who half the people on my dash are. I'm Tony. Just writing that down. Oh no. This is a big one. Let's go. We have the big tumblers now. Apparently, a part of the reason why farm the bees stay in the beehives that humans build for them is because the farm hives are safer and sturdier. I don't know how a busy Discord server is worth of bugs that only have what breaks. I would logically conclude that the humans are protected from outside threats, illness, and parasites. But if I understood right, the bees would be free to move away and build a new let as as somewhere else anytime they'd want, and they simply choose not to. You know how. You know how in almost every culture, people will have some concept of if I sacrifice something that I made as gross as produced to the gods, they will ward me in my evil, my harvest from evil. So in a way, don't the bees willingly sacrifice a part of their harvest to an entity not only far greater than them, but nearly beyond their comprehension in exchange for protection against natural forces wildly outside of their own control? So tell me, beekeepers, what are you to your bees, if not a mildly eldritch god? Oh god. I don't know about other cultures, but in English folklore, when a beekeeper dies, someone has to go out and tell the bees. Imagine, you're a Neolithic hunter-gatherer, just hanging out, sacrificing stuff to your god. When a new god you've never met before shows up and tells you that your god is dead. It's not your fault or anything. And maybe a new god will come along to take care of you, maybe not. It's gonna be touch and go for a while. Apparently, in medieval Europe, they also whispered secrets to the bees. So imagine the mildly eldritch god you worship talks to you and tells you secrets, but these secrets make no sense to you and are incomprehensible to understand or even know they are secrets. But your god does make vibrations at you, so that's probably a good thing, right? I was like, I should just form the side so there's not enough room to hide because the elf god didn't take the offering of honey at the normal time. So enough of a swarm builds up that the second and queen is able to leave without decimating the first swarm. They are all set to search out a new place. They will likely not have their god anymore. But really, that's not too much of a struggle. They have abandoned you. That's part of why you've left, even though the first swarm still holds out hope for their return. And then the scouts find another hive right next to the old hive. Literally right next to it. So the queen lands inspected, and wow, it's a good deal. The area already has enough food to support two hives, so it's not a problem to stay in the area now. They have the space. But this wasn't here before. And then you see God. They've come to help the swarm move to the new hive and take the offering from the old hive. Truly, this must have been their plan all along. In English folk lore, you also have to invite your bees to your wedding and decorate their hive and leave a slice of cake for them and also bring a new spouse by to introduce them to the hive straight away. Imagine your eldritch god doing that! Oh yes, the eldritch god invites you to a ceremony with so many different and deities and yet only either one is actually related to you. And yes, I'm actually making this up on my own now. <laughs> and they give and they a a a they decorate your or home in weird ways. You don't complain because 
Well, they have the power to destroy your entire civilization if they choose. And they are protecting you. And then the elder gods grant you a treat. A sweet thing. A triangle of sweet. And they introduce a different deity. Say something about a wife. Anyway, I think that's enough. Seven years old? She should have been at the club! Yeah, let's go! Is Seals having a good time at this club? Guys, I did not know what Seal Clubbing meant when I posted this. Oh. That is quite the mistake. <laughs> Decided I'm gonna get this printed as a poster and just hang it above my bed so each morning I can wake up feeling like a victim of medical mal malpractice. Yeah, I'm not. I don't like that guy. He's transphobic. Anyway, not the actual actor I'm talking about in the show. They have a lot of stuff. Massive bell ringing. You're now listening to Hammer Striking Metal. 102.3. Sorry, it's being drawn. Real Dwarf FM. Got a horn of being blown. Or you play a, a nothing but metal, rock, and stone. Liquid metal boiling. Axe is being shields. This saying your elf maiden station. Imagine Dragons Radioactive starts playing every heckin' time. I mean, you could at least do oh, oh, diggy, diggy hole. This is what we're talking about. Oh, we're here. Dang, did they? Did I read that many memes already? Oh well. Your blog if you love her cosplay. She did such a good job. Think. Yep, okay. Looks like we tumbled straight into last time's tumbling. That's funny. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to do tomorrow, and I barely remember what I just did. So until tomorrow, goodbye! Oh yeah, Happy New Year's, I guess.